you'll see why later. So welcome everybody. And let me see if I can get that going. Okay, so before OS 10, before the X-Men, it was Brood 10. So in a little while, we'll be invaded by billions of cicadas. And these will be the 17 year old, 17 year cicadas, and I guess they're 17 year old too. Um, even the ancient Greeks and you know, people before that um, made note of cicadas. This is a, a coin about the time of Plato. And he wrote, and what a lovely stream under the plane tree and how cool to the feet. And then too, isn't the freshness of the air most welcome and pleasant and the shrill summary music of the cicada choir. So maybe you'll see something like this or this. And we happen to be um, in this area around, um, I'm going to turn on my pointer here. Maryland, Northern Virginia, Pennsylvania, but brood 10 will also emerge in Indiana and Ohio and down here in Pennsylvania and Georgia um, to a lesser extent. So how do they emerge? They spend their months digging tunnels to the surface these last months. They're wingless at first, but soon molt and have wings. <clears throat> the cicadas live off the tree sap from the roots for about 18 to 24 inches uh, underground. And then a few months before they pop out of the ground, uh, the cicadas using their legs to dig tunnels to the surface. The tunnel sometimes ends in a cicada hut, a half inch wide hole near the base of the tree. And once the soil is about 64 degrees, huge numbers come out and climb onto the trees. They'll shed their exoskeletons, mate, lay their eggs, and then die. So in summary, they'll emerge in the middle of May, roughly. Um, they'll all be dead. All the adults will be dead by the end of June. And then in August, the eggs will hatch. So here's a, a molting cicada. <clears throat> so what's on their minds? You have to ask. <laughs> The males sing and the females respond by clicking it a few times. And then the females mate with the first male to find her and find them. The males die. Females lay 400 to 600 eggs in small branches of the trees, then they die. So what goes on for the next 17 years? Well, in August, uh, the nymphs, the size of a grain of rice, hatch and fall to the ground. As I said before, they dig about 18 to 24 inches below. And then they suck on tree sap for the next 17 years. Um, <clears throat> it's thought that they might count the years by fours after, the, after year one. So, uh, but there's no, evidence or there's no proof that that's what happens, um, but they probably, or they obviously get their, well, I shouldn't say that. It's likely they get their signals um, for the years by detecting something in the, the sap, but that's not known either. So <clears throat> they're not locusts. Locusts are related to grasshoppers, whereas the cicadas are related to aphids. They're the loudest in insects. And when they first emerge, they taste like canned asparagus, I'm told. They are low in fat and high in protein. <clears throat> and they do not bite or sting humans. In fact, they're very slow flyers. And if you have any little kids around, you might want to give them a butterfly net and let them go chase them around, might have fun. <clears throat> and your dog or cat could become constipated after gorging on cicadas since they are difficult to digest. <clears throat> When I first uh, made a presentation like this in 2004, there was only eight genes for the magic cicadas. That's their genus. 
um, but now there's over 2,400. <clears throat> so some more interesting facts. There are too many to be wiped out by predators, predatory, predatory satiations at up to one and a half million per acre of these guys. Of course, we reduce the, uh, the available land by building parking lots and so forth. Avian insectivores are less abundant during periodical cicada emergences, but it's not known why. Sort of counterintuitive. <coughs> Excuse me. Birds in a tropical rainforest significantly avoid temporal overlap with cicadas by reducing and often shutting down vocalizations at the onset of cicada signals that utilize the same frequency range. When birds do vocalize at the same time as cicadas, the vocalizations primarily occur at non-overlapping frequencies with the cicada signals. And if you're lucky, you might find a swallow-tailed kite at Blue Mash. I was alerted to the kite by uh, Dave Roberts, and this one has a cicada. So <clears throat> that's it for the cicadas. I thought I'd throw this other bit in as well, because we've been hearing a lot about <clears throat> diseases that have been transmitted to different birds uh, through feeders and water baths. So just a reminder to clean your bird feeders and water baths frequently, probably once a week or so, <clears throat> um, to prevent organisms like mycoplasma that causes the red, swollen, runny, or crusty eyes in finches and related birds. Here's an example of one or avian pox, <clears throat> which is characterized by wart-like growths on the featherless errors, areas of the body, such as around the eye, the base of the neck, and on the legs and feet, as in the case of this song sparrow, probably. And then there's another disease carried, for example, by pine siskins, um, which may show lethargy and have eye infections caused by salmonella. That is, um, in addition to killing birds, sickening people as well. And that includes hummingbirds. <clears throat> so, but I don't want to end on a dreary note. So I found this ad. And if you don't want to, if you want to go the extra mile, you might want to clean your hummingbirds as well. And so I'm imagining that this uh, white, uh, larger thing is to scrub the backs and fronts of the hummingbirds. And you can use this little brush maybe to get under the window.